Hello, I'm John Sargent and welcome to Argumental, the show where the finest minds in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Is immigration out of control? Are biofuels really viable? And why do the words flammable and inflammable mean the same thing? <laughs> Here to argue such hot topics and many more like them are our teams. In the red corner, Captain Marcus Brigstock and his special guest, Lucy Porter. <laughs> And opposing them in the blue corner, Captain Rufus Hound and his special guest, Patrick Keelty. <laughs> OK, let's crack on with round one, where I ask the teams to argue about a big issue that's been sending shivers down the spine of the nation. Tonight it's this. Britain, it seems like we're getting dumber by the minute. The signs are all around us, but sadly, no one can read them. People only write to each other using text nowadays, and kids think the word great ends in a number. <laughs> so, the statement I'm like asking you to debate is this. Britain, we is all dumbing down in it. <laughs> First up tonight, arguing that Britain is dumbing down, it's Marcus Brigstock. Thank you. Thank you very much. The question at hand, ladies and gentlemen, Britain is dumbing down. Do we think it is? Well, let's start with the fact that we are appearing on a channel called Dave. <laughs> oh? You flip around. Have a look. You won't find a channel called Tarquin with some interesting <laughs> documents. No, it's Dave. Dave's the sort of channel will get you in a headlock going, ah, bollocks. <laughs> and the news as well. I mean, the news used to be clever. Not anymore. I mean, you used to trust journalists that they'd gone out and done the research. Now, at the end of every news item, you get... And we really want to know what you think about this. So why don't you send us your texts and emails? Ah, we've got one here from uh, Barry from Wigan writing about the uh, crisis in the Darfur region of Sudan. And he says it's a load of fat cock. So uh, <laughs> keep those texts and emails coming because they're really informative. And literature. Literature's dumbed down in this country. Of course it has. I mean, we, we produced Shakespeare, this country's greatest plagiarist. <laughs> People sitting at home now going, plagiarists, what's that? Wrote plays. <laughs> <laughs> because we've dumbed down, of course we have. Do you know Jordan's last book? She's written three biographies, or had three biographies written about her. Three. Her last book outsold the entire Booker Prize uh, list. The entire list of nominations was outsold by Jordan's book, which was ghostwritten by a horse. <laughs> Even food has dumbed down. Children won't eat anything unless it's in the shape of another thing. The Twizzler. A, a turkey device in the shape of a pig's cock. <laughs> now, I've got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in a slightly tricky position here this evening. A little bit of a difficult position. Because I grew up as a comic. I came into this industry when the fantastic Mr Patrick Keelty uh, was well established. However, in the context of dumbing down, ladies and gentlemen, you are about to be lectured about it from the host of not only Love Island... <laughs> but the host of Love Island 2. <laughs> I put it to you, ladies and gentlemen, Britain is dumbing down, and that is why I recommend, please, that you vote with the red team. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. Next up, the Swami on behalf of the blue team, it's Patrick Keelty. <laughs> host of Love Island. There he is. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, uh, can I actually pay tribute? to Marcus uh, for his persuasive patter this evening. <laughs> Apart from the Love Island stuff, it was occasionally funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was a highly intelligent argument. Yet, my friends, all of you understood. Why is that, my friends? It's because you are not dumb. <laughs> None of you had a posh university education. I know some of you fell asleep earlier during a recording of Loose Woman and have just woken up thinking, isn't Colleen Nolan looking well? <laughs> Let me expand, folks. This show is hosted by John Sargent, one of the finest political commentators that the nation has ever produced. Recently, you may have seen him in a reality show. I'm proud to host a reality show. He is proud to dance in a reality show. Yes, a 64-year-old man who's managed to get his ass bumping and grinding alongside a six-foot blonde in fishnets and then go home and tell the wife he's working. <laughs> Reality shows, folks, are the, they're the last bastion of democracy in this great nation. 
We are the type of shows that actually give you, the people of Britain, a vote. People like Marcus don't want you to vote. No. no. People like Marcus want you with a pitchfork mucking out his polo ponies. That's, right. That's what he wants. More people voted on the last series of X Factor than did in the last election. Ask yourself this question. Would Leona Lewis really be doing a worse job than Gordon Brown right now? <laughs> and that is why you should vote for the blue team. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. Rufus and Lucy, do you want to join in? That was passionate, wasn't it? Very passionate. That was very passionate. I do. I, I, I mean, think I... it was also correct, Lucy. Mm. <laughs> and let's be honest, you know, it, you know, if Britain is dumb and dying, Marcus, then, you know, surely someone as educated as you would know the difference between a pig's tail and a pig's penis. <laughs> yeah, a pig's, a pig's penis is also spiral, very much like its tail. <laughs> that is true. He's right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, um... If this, no! I, no! I, uh, I may be posh, Mr. Kilty, but if there's one thing I know, it's pig's cock. <laughs> well, Marcus, it's, it's pretty clear that this is, a, you know, roughly, loosely, a comedy panel show. A couple of years ago, you know, Britain was so stupid that team captains would have been called Gary uh, uh, and Rory, and the rounds would have been group up the sportsman. Now we've actually got someone <laughs> called Marcus arguing about the fabric of British society. That mm. surely shows us that the nation is moving forward. And if I may One make... programme. I'm allowed on one programme. <laughs> <laughs> but hang on. To be honest with you... That's not true, is it? You are on two programmes. What is the name of the programme that you are on on BBC One? Oh, hey. sorry, I've got no head. Sorry, I've got no head. <laughs> <laughs> Britain isn't dumbing down, ladies and gentlemen. Marcus is dragging us down. <laughs> <laughs> The point is, that is a kid's program. Yes, and when I was a child, we had shows like Ivor the Engine, <laughs> where the specifics of... Well, I'm so coal... sorry I'm not an animated train. <laughs> so am I! <laughs> I only agreed to be on this because I thought you were an animated train. In a way, I am. Toot, toot! <laughs> OK, so who made the best case? It's time for our studio audience to decide. Remember, it's a red card for Marcus and a blue card for Patrick. It's a red win. Well done, Marcus Bigstock. That's what I'm talking about. In your face. Right, next up is the slideshow. One member from each team will again be debating a controversial subject, but this time I want them to incorporate a series of pictures which they've never seen before into their argument. Rufus, I'd like you to go first for the blue team and make the case that Eurovision has had its day. Here's a picture to start you off. Of course, Eurovision has had its day, ladies and gentlemen. There can be no doubting that. Anybody who's witnessed the last two travesties knows that <laughs> intrinsically it's just uh, another way for the people of Europe to tell us we're cocks. <laughs> Eurovision used to be uh, the, uh, a chance for us all to sit down over a nice glass of scotch <laughs> and <laughs> realise that there was a joy in being different. That was the point, the Eurovision song contest. So you'd have the Latvians giving it a bit of um-pa-pa, um-pa-pa, and we'd look at them and go, what is this, goblins? <laughs> uh, and know that we were only ever a phone call away <laughs> from letting our voices be heard. You would ring each other on the phone saying, I can't believe this. The, the Ukrainian entry's just come out and it's basically a man dancing around a xylophone with no trousers on. <laughs> Whereas, now, there seems too much at stake. <laughs> Ultimately, we have to make a decision to be or not to be <laughs> in the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, <laughs> but if you thought that, you'd be a right dick. <laughs> Thank you, Rufus. Up next, and arguing in favour of Eurovision, it's Lucy Porter. Here's your first picture. Oh, you see, what can I say, Rufus? You're so wrong. We love Eurovision, don't we? Yes! <laughs> Six of us do. <laughs> and, 
Bucks Fizz was a part of my childhood. I'm sure a lot of people like me. You did that thing in the playground where you'd get the boys to rip your skirt off. <laughs> I'm very proud to say it's still something that teenage girls do to this very day. <laughs> And lemon, lem the sourness of people like Rufus saying that the Eurovision doesn't matter. They say if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. If life gives you no singing ability or dancing talent whatsoever, enter Eurovision. You're welcome. <laughs> Even if... Ah, Amy Winehouse. Uh, <laughs> Is someone who probably won't get into Eurovision. Um, yeah, but it's not shown on a Friday. Um, it's, a, it's a Saturday night institution. It's a great British institution, like the fried breakfast. It's one of those things, it's in danger of running out because, like the fried breakfast, it makes you feel a bit sick, it might give you cancer. So we <laughs> vote to keep Eurovision. Vote for it! <laughs> Thanks, Lucy. Marcus and Patrick, do you want to come in on this? Yes. The notion that, that Eurovision has had its day suggests that at one time or another it was good. It was good. I think we need to stick with Eurovision until such time as at least one of the entries is passable. <laughs> yeah. I there has been some magnificent Eurovision songs. List them. All right, all the ones by ABBA. Mm -hmm. Shite. Absolute shite. <laughs> that right. band are a Hold disgrace. Fire. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a man who hates ABBA. I do. I despise them. I, the reason I hate ABBA more than anything is because I've been to a wedding. <laughs> it only takes one wedding for you to realise just how shit ABBA is. Here's what happens at a wedding. Okay? Marcus, Marcus, can I just... Have a nice conversation. No. Dancing Queen comes and goes, Oh, I like this. Everybody gets up and then they suddenly realise, Oh, you can't fucking dance to it. <laughs> Au contraire! Hit it! <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't be more wrong. You see, Abba... I is... could and I will be. <laughs> <laughs> Abba is... No, I will not sit, Keelty, and you cannot make me. <laughs> The point is, ABBA is the great buffer because it is basically plodding two-step pop. Dancing Queen... Uh, da, 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 da. See, I can't dance and yet I can do this. Sergeant's over there wanting to pirouette and do a full, <laughs> a full backflip, but I'm currently dancing to ABBA, right? Where, if, if there are girls in the room, <laughs> right? Girls in the room are looking at me thinking, well, he's not the greatest mover in the world, but he can hold it down, right? <laughs> if there is no ABBA, our alternative is instead Gangs of women on the dance floor dancing to I Will Survive. <laughs> With Dancing Queen, they're kind of looking at you going, oh, we're all in this together. Whereas, uh, I Will Survive, it's just a group of women going, all right, now go! <laughs> the blue WKD pouring out of their veins. The bitterness, the resentment, all of the visions of ex-boyfriends melting away in front of them as the witches slowly turn. <laughs> Rufus! <laughs> I'm not above solving this argument with a dance okay, off. Alright, thank Rufus, you. This is a very moving meant, moment. Come on now. We are meant to be you. arguing that Eurovision is shit and you've defended ABBA for five minutes! I, <laughs> I tried to stop you! Okay, Rufus, you succumbed. You're in the arms of the enemy. Sit down. <laughs> I believe I may have fallen bits into a honey trap. <laughs> <laughs> OK, which one of our teams made the best case? It's time for our studio audience to decide. I wonder how Hold this up is your red go. card if you think Lucy was spot on and your blue card if you agreed with Rufus. Yes! Jesus, this is a block. Oh, look at those Latvian freaks at the back. <laughs> so, a clear victory for the blue team. Well done, Rufus Hound. <laughs> OK, join us after the break for more Top Flight arguments when we'll be finding out if Jeremy Clarkson deserves a knighthood. <laughs> Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Argumental, the show with more shouting and gesticulating mm. than Heathrow on a bank holiday. <laughs> We crack on with our celebrity round and the glittering Goliath under the microscope this week is this gentleman. Some say he's the greatest TV presenter of all time. Others say he's an anti-environment right-wing bigot with bad teeth and crap hair. 
<laughs> All we know is he drives fast cars, sells lots of books, and is called Jeremy Clarkson. But the statement I'd like our teams to argue is Jeremy Clarkson deserves a knighthood. <laughs> Starting us off in favour of the statement is Rufus. Now, uh, we're about to hear an argument in a minute from a couple of, uh, let's call them people, <laughs> as to why Jeremy Clarkson shouldn't have a knighthood. But they are already inclined to dislike Jeremy Clarkson. He's the poster boy for environmental scepticism. Marcus, if you know anything about him, it's green this, green that. So the fact that this man is able to speak on behalf of people who aren't are less convinced than Marcus means he's on Marcus's hit list. I should tell you, other people on Marcus's hit list, the gladiators and anyone who can't speak Latin. <laughs> All that's gone on here is Jeremy Clarkson is a man who quite likes cars and there are lots of other people who quite like cars. He makes programmes for those people. But those people who quite like cars will say, I quite like this car. Whereas Jeremy Clarkson will say, this car is so good, if it was made of gay Rottweilers, I'd still put my key in the ignition. <laughs> <laughs> the lazy argument, ladies and gentlemen, is to say not only does Jeremy Clarkson not deserve a knighthood, but he wouldn't want a knighthood, as it would involve hanging out with the royal family, who are... German and a woman. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, is founded on the sort of pointy looky nature of all oh, the royal family. They're really Germans, aren't they? <laughs> like it matters for one moment where your monarch is from. Less than a hundred years ago, we had an empire where Queen Elizabeth was the Queen of India. Now, do you think it mattered to them that Queen she was. Queen Victoria. Wasn't... What? Queen Victoria. What did I say? English. Right, yeah. <laughs> Trying to prove the stuff. It's just standards, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost as if Britain's dumb and dying. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson unquestionably <laughs> deserves a knighthood. Now, there are those that will scoff and say, oh, the Queen is German, like it matters where our Queen is from. About 150 years ago, a little lady I know as Queen Victoria... <laughs> <laughs> ..was Queen of all India. Do you think it mattered to the Indians that she wasn't their Queen, that she wasn't from India? Do you think one guy in Delhi turned to another guy in Delhi and said, well, the torture and the slavery I can deal with, but she's not even from round here? <laughs> Of course not! <laughs> Jeremy deserves that knighthood, ladies and gentlemen. You know it, I know it. Not because he has done anything massively worthwhile, but just because if anybody really gives a stuff about patriotism anymore, it's surely that golf club loving, wretched toothed, Piers. Oh! <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> <laughs> right, ignore everything else. <laughs> I can nail this in one bite of the cherry. And I guarantee you this. Whatever you think of this man, whatever you think of his politics, know this. He punched Piers Morgan three times. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson deserves that knighthood. Well recovered. Well recovered. <laughs> Thanks very much, Rufus. Now, opposing him and Jeremy Clarkson, it's Lucy Porter. <laughs> OK, we must, no matter how persuasive Rufus's argument may have seemed to you, we must not give Jeremy Clarkson a knighthood. People say about Clarkson, they go, oh, he's such a breath of fresh air in the face of political correctness. Oh, a breath of fresh air, which is very ironic for a man who wants to turn our atmosphere into a black, sulphurous cancerous smoggy soup right <laughs> he's a horrible evil man basically if jeremy clarkson right he <laughs> you know when you get all worked up and then you go oh i've peaked um <laughs> <laughs> well, just remember lucy jeremy clarkson did that to you <laughs> 
<laughs> Even a cardboard cutout, that's how testosterone filled this man is. I know, but it's a bad thing. Jeremy Clarkson, basically, he's, he's an evil man. He hates farmers, he hates gays, he, he's bigoted. He's basically, he's the white Robert Mugabe, right? <laughs> and I mean, are you seriously suggesting that we should give Robert Mugabe a knighthood? Obviously, it's a slightly moot point, because we already have. <laughs> not a nice man. He's a horrible man. He's one of these people. He's like that sort of, you know, white, middle-aged, middle-class kind of bloke who just can't accept, oh, God, the world's changing. Oh, God, oh, God, the women are starting to get uppity. Oh, what can we do? Oh. And then he just wants to ruin the world for the rest of us. No, it's like, it's like the kid who's playing in the sandpit and gets told to leave, so then just does a big poo in it. Right? <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson is a child who has done a poo in a sandpit, right? A great big oily poo. <laughs> Do not vote for him! Thanks, Lucy. OK, other members of the team, you can join in now. Jeremy Clarkson is a genuinely, deeply unpleasant man, fuelled by hatred, as am I, but for good reasons. <laughs> <laughs> hatred of what? Hatred of what? Hatred of change. Uh, it was exactly what Lucy was saying. Are we talking saying. about you or He's him? He's terrified of change. Anything that's, d that's changing or developing or moving forward, no. other than a car, and he goes into this sort of pathetic shitting in the sandpit paddy. <laughs> I think you're possibly, though, overstating Clarkson's reach. I think <laughs> you're... 50,000 people signed a website demanding that he be made Prime Minister. Now, in the scheme of democratic... Uh, Movement that may not seem like that many, but only 60,000 voted in the last general election. <laughs> I tell you what, give them a choice between Jeremy Clarkson and Gordon Brown now, I think you might get 50,000 more. People, <laughs> 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 oh my god, <laughs> make him prime minister. Boat you sailed in on. Jesus, <laughs> Christ, oh. so, there needs to be a cull. Eug <laughs> Eugenics is the only way forward, honestly. Marcus, you're not winning them over. No, f*** <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy you all a puppy. If you're selling the one with the pink nose, I'll take a pair. <laughs> <laughs> OK, f***. <laughs> you see, I don't have to be in the same room <laughs> as him. I think, uh, I think there are probably two things to bear in mind here. Uh, he punched Piers Morgan, and uh, Marcus hates you. <laughs> OK, thank you, teams. But which team made the best case? It's time for our studio audience to decide. It's a blue card for Rufus and Patrick, and a red one for Lucy and Marcus. Raise your cards now, please. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> ah. I may have slightly spoiled it for you. <laughs> It's a victory for the blue team. Well done to Rufus and Patrick. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson is one of the best-known faces on television. In fact, these days, the only person who doesn't recognise him is Richard Hammond. <laughs> I'm all for Jeremy Clarkson going to the palace for a knighthood. He's on his knees and you've got a giant sword in your hand. If I may say so, Mum, do your duty. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson flies in the face of political correctness. He even buys his computer at non-PC World. <laughs> Time now for our final quickfire round and a last chance for the teams to prove what argumental so-and-sos they really are. I'll show them a series of pictures. All they have to do is to suggest an argument to go with them. OK, teams, here we go. Uh, this is the argument against the phrase, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> is it an argument against covering yourself in jam and having sex in a barn? It's <laughs> an argument for that. <laughs> <laughs> Just fun on anyone's day. Is it an argument for always carrying petrol and matches? <laughs> <laughs> Depends who's in there. If it's Jeremy Clarkson, I'm with you. <laughs> Sorry, Sir Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> and while we're at it, arise, Sir Robert Kilroy Silk. Let's give that one a round of applause, you <laughs> idiot. <laughs> um, OK, the next picture. <laughs> is this, uh, uh, is this the argument against 
uh, alcoholic minstrels. <laughs> I think this is uh, an argument to remind people, hey, don't drink in mine. <laughs> or it's, it's the argument for the skincare range from Silit Bang. <laughs> <laughs> Bang! And the face is gone. <laughs> Next picture. Is it an argument for contraception? <laughs> Is it a, an argument that uh, Donald Trump and Boris Johnson share some sort of hair time share scheme? <laughs> <laughs> you have it Wednesdays. All right, Don, yeah. <laughs> I think it's an argument that if your surname is a euphemism for a fart, it doesn't much matter what your hair looks like. <laughs> is it an argument for knighting Donald Trump? Indeed it is. Arise, Sir Trump. <laughs> Next picture. I think this is an argument for ambition. Look at that. That child's built a rocket. You wouldn't get the youth of today building anything like that. Do you want to build a rocket, son? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so not bothered. Is it an argument for believing that the moon landings may have been faked? <laughs> I think it's really an argument saying, hey, amputees can have fun too. <laughs> The kid's got no legs, he's made a rocket. Respect him. <laughs> What's wrong with you people? <laughs> Shit, I'm doing it again. You are... <laughs> I'll try and do a nice one. There's I'll nothing do... wrong with these people, they're good people. <laughs> Is it an argument for putting really farty children in airtight suits? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think I uh, do know this. Is it the argument uh, for making sure mummy's bottom drawer is always locked? <laughs> OK, that's it. So, for the final time, it's down to our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Red for Marcus and Lucy, blue for Rufus and Patrick. Vote no, now. Don't let any small instances mm. of temper loss sway <laughs> this decision, ladies and gentlemen. So, I can tell you that the blue team have won the round, oh. which means this week's winners are the blue team. Oh, sorry. Well done, Rufus Hound and Patrick Keelty. Commiserations to Marcus Brigstock and Lucy Porter. That's all we've got time for. Good night. <laughs>